So my topic is my journey through Moya Moya surgery. So I come from Huashan Hospital. So our neurosurgical department is very huge. Uh, last year we have uh, 15,000 uh, surgeries. And we have four campus. Uh, this picture is the uh, West Campus. We just opened uh, this year. And uh, after I come back to Shanghai, uh, some of my beds were moved to this new campus. Now we totally have uh, 800 beds, uh, 40 operation rooms. Uh, this is a Suzuki, uh, Suzuki stage for Moya Moya disease. This is stage one. We only can see the stenosis uh, at the distal uh, t uh, part of the ICA and the uh, ACA and the MCA. Stage two, uh, we can see some uh, Moya Moya uh, vessels. Stage three, stage four. Actually, stage four, comparing to stage three, the Moya Moya uh, vessels decreased. And this is uh, uh, stage five. Uh, we can see some uh, spontaneous stoma come from the ECA. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, from, mostly from uh, middle meningeal artery. And this is stage six. Uh, the ICA terminal part was totally occluded. Uh, in uh, my uh, Syria, only uh, more than uh, now it's uh, near 6,000 cases. Uh, only nine cases uh, surgery is unnecessary. Like this patient, we can uh, pre-operative uh, DSA should uh, abundant collateral uh, vessels comes from the ECA branches from uh, anterior branch of uh, middle meningitis and the posterior ones. So this, uh, th this guy is even lucky. You, you can see the uh, middle meningitis was very thick and uh, come to the blood flow, uh, come to M2. And uh, this is the uh, collaterals from uh, uh, STA and then uh, MMA. But uh, mostly the ischemia uh, could be found uh, in SPECT and the CDP uh, examination. The surgery is necessary. Although there's some spontaneous uh, stoma comes from the branches of ECA. Uh, we, could, uh, we can use three branches uh, of ECA, uh, which is the STA, or postolicular artery, or occipital artery of the scalp, uh, anterior deep temporal artery or posterior deep temporal artery of uh, temporal muscle and the middle meningeal artery of the dural. So DTA is very thin and hard to be recognized before surgery. Uh, we can see this is, uh, this is uh, the deep temporal artery and uh, frontier one, the posterior one. Uh, after, the, uh, after the EVMS, uh, this uh, deep temporal artery enlarged a lot. So then we can recognize uh, the vessel very well. So our opinion, the DTA network should be kept uh, intact in operation without any cutting of the temporal muscle. Uh, in stage six, uh, five or six Moya uh, Moya uh, disease, the middle meningeal artery already formed the spontaneous stomas with the arteries of the cortex. So this kind of uh, middle meningeal artery should be kept in intact. Sometimes more, um, MMA also can be uh, originated from ICA branches, like this patient, the middle meningeal artery come from the ophthalmic artery. Uh, the, this is a, a ECA angiogram. We couldn't find any middle meningeal artery. Uh, STA also uh, should be analyzed uh, preoperatively. This is a, a very low uh, frontal branch. So this is a parietal branch. This is a only, uh, we can use this only branch because if we dissect this one, we could hurt, uh, hurt the facial nerve frontal uh, branch. So this is the post artery, uh, occipital artery. 
So uh, three ways to use STA, uh, direct STA MCA bypass, indirect, uh, indirect use in EDAS or EDAMS or EAS. Sometimes uh, also use uh, momentum transplantation using the blood flow of STA, but not the vessel. So our approach is a new combined approach for Moya Moya. Uh, it's a STA or PAA or OA to MCA or ACA or PCA bypass combined with e, uh, EDMS. So uh, our purpose is to allow the maximum use of the three arteries. This is uh, uh, after the, uh, the follow-up angiogram after the surgery, we can see all the three layers, uh, arteries are enlarged so much and uh, almost the whole hemisphere was feeded by the ECA branches. This is the occipital. <laughs> so uh, the, basically uh, every patient would uh, take the EDMS and the direct part is the STA MCA bypass. So uh, until uh, December of uh, last year, I have uh, 5,677 cases totally. Combined approach was taken in 90.3%. Uh, so the STA, uh, so the skin incision, bone flap, dural, and the uh, bypass location was all individualized designed. This is a uh, scalp according to the anatomy of STA, occipital artery or post auricular artery and the middle major artery and the ischemic area. So uh, the preoperative incision design is very important. And I don't use any hand uh, head clamp to protect the contralateral STA. So uh, this patient, uh, there's some collateral from the uh, posterior branch of uh, uh, parietal branch of STA. So we can use this incision and use this frontal uh, branch to create the uh, direct bypass combined EDMS. And this is a hemological uh, type, Moya Moya. And uh, he already have some spontaneous stoma comes from uh, middle meninge artery after the drainage. So, uh, uh, we only use uh, this incision, and this is a very uh, extensive ischemic condition. So we can uh, use a wide uh, 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 scalp. And this patient is uh, also a doctor. He got the uh, visual inf uh, infection. So, uh, so we use this uh, occipital artery and the parietal branch of STA to create a double, double bypass combined uh, EDMS for him. So this uh, patient have already abundant uh, collateral uh, blood flow from uh, middle meninge artery, but still have uh, ischemic condition around here. So we use uh, two winder, two bone winder to create the uh, double bypass. And this is a similar condition. And this is the post auricular artery. And uh, this patient have a uh, uh, spontaneous stoma come from the frontal branch and the posterior branch of middle meninge artery, but we can still find uh, <clears throat> uh, this location, we can uh, find uh, some recipient artery and the, the, the direct bypass. This is a, a bifrontal approach. Uh, sometimes uh, patients already uh, did the bilateral uh, EDAS. This is a uh, invalid bilateral EDAS. So uh, we did the, we redo the, uh, and, uh, uh, the surgery uh, use, using the anterior branch of STA to create the uh, direct bypass combined uh, EDMS. But sometimes direct bypass was infeasible, uh, more likely in female patients. So this is a, a very wide uh, opened uh, cortex. We can see in the whole surgical field, there's no uh, recipient artery could be found. And the technically, this one is uh, uh, can do the direct bypass, but we can see the neighbor uh, branches of M MCA. 
this is already occluded. This is uh, almost occluded. So this kind of uh, patient who uh, we uh, do the direct bypass for the patient, he would uh, uh, suffer for the hemorrhage. It's very dangerous. So we quit the direct bypass, but, uh, but we still use uh, EDMS. So uh, before we do the direct bypass, uh, we should uh, analyze the blood flow in MCA territory before surgery. So MCA ter territory ha uh, has two types uh, of blood flow. This is the first type. It still keeps the ph uh, physiological direction. Uh, P proximal is uh, larger than the P distal. So the blood flow still comes from uh, this, uh, this way. But there's a second type of MCA uh, blood flow. It's reversed uh, physiological direction. P proximal is uh, less than uh, P distal. So we can see this is the latest stage of the uh, angiogram. Uh, we can find the uh, N2. So I always dissect the STA from inner side of the uh, scalp. So we don't use any uh, Doppler to uh, measure the, where is the uh, STA. We only uh, recognize it uh, uh, on the DSA. And uh, if you can see it, uh, if you uh, actually, it's very easy to recognize it from inner side of the uh, flap. And after uh, harvest the STA, I clo uh, close the incision of the superficial temporal fissure from inner side, just like this. So sometimes even uh, two layers suture, uh, suturation, uh, which is uh, uh, here, we can see the, some sutures here, and uh, this is a superficial uh, temporal fissure. This is a galley. So uh, after this treatment, the delayed scalp healing or infection of the scalp uh, never happened. So uh, the secret uh, of Moya Moya surgery is keeps the integrity of STA, DTA, and the uh, MMA, MMA network intact. We can see this is a STA uh, very clear from inner side of the, the scalp. And this is a deep, deep temporal artery and the uh, middle meningeal artery. Uh, this kind of patient is very sensitive uh, for uh, blood loss. So uh, the uh, creatinine, the bleeding uh, loss, uh, the blood loss was very uh, strictly controlled, less than 20 mAR. This is a divided bone flap uh, to protect the uh, MMA. So uh, this is a, a double window, double bone window. So uh, the best protection of middle meningeal artery is keeping the integrity of middle meningeal artery, middle meningeal vein, and the covered bone complex like this. So sometimes uh, also use a, a single bone flap combined multiple hole and the double frontal bone flap like this. So the dual was also individualized uh, uh, cut. So uh, according to the main branch of the, uh, under the uh, trunk of the middle meningeal artery, like this, and this is already flipped over. So this is a spontaneous uh, stoma comes from middle meningeal artery to the cortex. Normally the middle meningeal vein was uh, uh, just like this. After creotomy, uh, there's a hole on the middle meningeal vein. Uh, it couldn't be coagulated because uh, it's gonna hold the middle meningeal artery. So this is my, uh, my way. So use a, a strip of uh, a gel form to make a roll. to compress the uh, bleeding from the vein, but still keep the uh, patency of the artery. So I call this Chinese spring roll. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lot of Chinese spring roll. 
So the stoma located in ischemic area, but not the totally infected area. I use uh, most simplified the technique in anastomosing. Uh, only use two or three curved microtemporal clips and uh, uh, don't sacrifice any branch of recipient artery. And I never use rubber mat or silicon rubber tube. And I always use uh, interrupting uh, suturing. Square knot is enough and then never touch the vascular intima. Uh, we should analyze a different uh, topographic feature. Uh, this is the, the normal uh, feature on the surface of the brain. We can just use two clips. And uh, on the slope of the valley, sometimes in the valley, So this is a video. Uh, after the cryotomy, I will use a gel form to cover a uh, wet gel form, cover the cortex, and only expose a uh, uh, small part of the recipient artery. And the STA already, uh, already harvested from the inner side of the scalp. and the temporal clip it. Then making the stoma. Cut the surrounding tissue. This is a heparin saline. Methane blue. and open the arachnoid membrane.
and the temporal clips, the recipient artery, and the never sacrifice any uh, branch of the recipient artery. and making the stoma on the recipient artery. This is a tensional uh, proline uh, suture. So square knot is enough. Uh, the first stitch I made the three uh, knot because I want the tail of the suture point out uh, of the stoma. Because the, uh, the whole surgical field was all covered by the uh, gel form, so uh, you don't uh, need to take care where is a, a needle. You only take care of the uh, tear of the suture.
So the suturing uh, procedure is only take five uh, minutes and 40 seconds. So uh, eight stitches. Remove the uh, temporal clip from the proximal part, uh, the distal part of the blood flow. So this is the final result. We can see all the branches of the protect very well and uh, keep patent. Actually, uh, this one, uh, only six stitches. It should be uh, faster than that one. Uh, sometimes the vessel uh, wall uh, is very thin, so uh, it's almost transparent. So sometimes I let a small branch open to uh, uh, let the slow reflux of the blood, uh, blood flow like this. If you uh, irrigate the uh, vessel uh, wall, use uh, heparin serine, you don't worry about the uh, thrombos. And the small uh, reflux uh, blood flow can keep uh, some pressure in the recipient artery and make it open. So the two layers uh, would not uh, be stitched together like this. Uh, this is a 3D uh, video uh, showing the uh, loop technique. I always use uh, interrupted uh, uh, suturing. Uh, this is not a continuous one. So the first loop. Thank <laughs> you. 
the second loop. So three loops can make uh, four stitches. So then cut the loop. <coughs> Making the square knot. So this, uh, this technique sometimes make it even faster. Uh, sometimes uh, we have some extremely thin uh, wall, even the needle hole can cause bleeding. So uh, this kind of condition, you should make sure to, that there's no kinking of, uh, of the suture. And they use the same, uh, so sometimes use some tissue to help. Uh, you can use alkaloid mem membrane fat. Gel form is helpful in uh, hemostosis, and uh, sometimes you need time to make the hemostosis. So uh, you can make some uh, additional tissue. You uh, uh, tie up like a lotus, a lotus root. So sometimes uh, we can also use a long uh, segment of parietal branch to create uh, cut in the middle and then made uh, the double barrel bypass use a single branch of STA. So the targeted bypass uh, means uh, we uh, made the recipient artery in the ischemic uh, area, which makes sure the delta P is uh, large. And this is single bypass, double bypass, even triple bypass. Uh, the bifurcation of the recipient artery uh, can distribute the uh, blood flow more quickly. So some uh, like this uh, with uh, uh, MCA uh, good network, I normally choose uh, the recipient, uh, the stoma near the bifurcation. A similar one. We can see it can distribute the blood flow from the donor artery very fastly. Then uh, to the EDMS. So this is a, a DSA change after MCA uh, and the PCA tentative. We can see before surgery MCA uh, was uh, uh, the blood flow comes from a, uh, ICA, but after the surgery, the blood flow all comes from STA. And after the surgery, uh, the post, uh, the post uh, PCA of left side was uh, uh, there's no blood flow comes from uh, the PCA because there's already efficient collateral blood flow. So we also use intraoperative MRI, uh, MRA. This this is the MRA. We can see the uh, bypass patent. Bypass. Uh, this is a uh, intraoperative uh, CT perfusion, uh, MR perfusion, CBF, CBV, and uh, this is a com uh, com uh, complement of the SCBF and the CBV. So uh, the very important thing is we should know the uh, Poisson's law before the uh, bypass. Delta P uh, in this law is only motive, uh, motive power for driving the blood flow. 
so we should make sure to keep data P positive. If the stoma near the high pressure location, because uh, the, the recipient artery in the cortex, uh, the pressure was not even. Uh, so uh, if you use the high pressure location, the dangerous for delayed occlusion of the bypass. So we should select the right position of the recipient artery. The uh, bi bidirection fast blood flow means a uh, big difference of, of data P bypass is sustainable like this patient. We can, uh, this is a single uh, bypass. This is donor artery. We can see the blood flow come to the recipient artery. It's by direction. And this is a double bypass. Uh, we can see this is a stoma. Another stoma comes to uh, bilateral. So this is a video I borrowed from uh, uh, another neurosurgeon. We can see the blood flow stopped here, and the data P is a pair, uh, barely positive from the donor artery. So uh, only after one week, we can see the, sto uh, the bypass was almost occluded. So, so this kind of uh, data P was too small. So we should understand that uh, there's some uh, difference between donor and the recipient artery. Uh, donor artery normally is sick wall. The resistant in situ, the uh, re re uh, resistant index in, uh, in situ was uh, 0 0.7 to 0 0.4. But after the uh, direct bypass, it can be decreased to 0 0.5 to 0 0.6. So the blood flow keep increasing after bypass. Uh, the recipient artery normally is M4. Uh, it's thin wall, uh, th thin wall and the re resistant index in such was uh, uh, 0 0.5 to uh, 0 0.6. Sometimes uh, MCA networks are uh, quite good, so it can be refluxed to M2 and uh, redistribute the blood flow quickly along the network of the uh, MCA. But sometimes the MCA network was quite poor. Uh, normally in the late, sta late stages of uh, Suzuki. It uh, can cause congestion of the blood flow in limited cortex, and this is uh, very dangerous for bleeding and infarction or edema. So this is a good MCA network. We can see uh, in the angiogram, we can see the whole MCA network. So this uh, MCA network can bear more blood flow from do uh, donor artery. But uh, this is the late stage uh, Moya Moya. We, can, we couldn't find any uh, network in the angiogram. So this is uh, very dangerous for uh, breathing after the direct bypass. So after the direct bypass, this is the uh, uh, intraoperative DSA. We can see the blood flow come to M2 and uh, then distribute the uh, blood flow to the, along the net network of MCA. So intraoperatively, we use NOVA to measure the uh, STA blood uh, flow. Uh, normally, because of the uh, very small of the recipient artery, uh, intraoperatively, uh, the uh, bypass blood flow is only 20 to 30 ml per minute. But after seven days, this is the same patient we can see it's increased 77 millimeter per minute. Uh, this is a double bypass after seven days. Uh, uh, the main trunk, this is a double bypass already increased to 176 um, ml per minute, sometimes even, uh, even more. So this is a long-term follow-up. We can see also uh, the good MCA network. So the red STA uh, blood flow was uh, 140 uh, millimeter per minute. But uh, this is the same patient, other side, this, uh, the MCA network were, was quite poor. So this STH uh, main trunk was only 91. So almost uh, 50 <coughs> millimeter per minute difference. So the good MCA network, uh, STA uh, bypass diameter increased to 3.3 uh, uh, mm, feeding the bigger MCA territory. And this is the uh, same patient the poor MCA network. The STA was patent, but uh, only feed the very, very limited cortex. 
but this is a deep temperature, um, deep temperature, middle meniotry. It's all uh, formed the uh, spontaneous stomas. So the determinants of blood flow after bypass uh, is a carrying capacity of the STA. Sometimes if the uh, recipient artery was too large, uh, especially in uh, uh, male patients, the donor artery uh, comparing to the recipient artery, the diameter uh, was not, uh, larger than 2.5 times. Uh, this is quite dangerous for hyperperfusion syndrome. So the bypass, uh, we uh, have some single double or one branch, double branch barrier. Uh, I only take a, a triple branch in four uh, patients, uh, but now I quit because uh, it's too uh, dangerous. So the location of the stoma is uh, uh, very uh, uh, import, uh, important. The data P, uh, P donor, uh, minus P recipient is very important and the carrying capacity of the recipient artery. The integrity of MCA network, uh, this is all the determinants of the blood flow. Um, Moya Moya case, uh, Moya Moya patients after the uh, bypass, uh, the temporal neurological uh, deterioration, TND, is uh, uh, very uh, common uh, complications and uh, in single bypass, uh, uh, around one fourth of them, and the double bypass, one, uh, one third, and the triple bypass, almost one half. So TND is commonly recognized as hyperperfusion syndrome. But is this real hyperperfusion syndrome? We use uh, SPECT to measure the perfusion condition uh, change in uh, 49 hemispheres. So the TND, this is uh, uh, all the uh, patient's uh, clinical data. So TND is not only happened in post-operative uh, post hyperperfusion, but also focal hypoperfusion. So this is the typical hyperperfusion. We can see after the surgery, uh, this glucose area uh, the blood flow increased a lot, uh, even the deep uh, structures. But sometimes we can find some uh, water shed shift, even in the uh, ICG, intraoperative ICG uh, angiogram. Even in the uh, same vein, we can see the water shed. Uh, this side is faster than the other side. So sometimes uh, hypoperfusion uh, also very common. So this is uh, after surgery, we can see actually the uh, glucose area, uh, it's uh, hypoperfusion. But uh, after uh, three months, we can see this is a totally uh, recovered and uh, increased comparing to the preoperative. One and uh, this is a uh, uh, inner structures perfusion all re all improved. So bypass in Moya Moya may lead to heterogeneous uh, hemodynamic changes. The TND could not recognize I only I, I hyperperfusion syndrome. So the both hyperperfusion and the hyperperfusion could cause TND. The perfusion of the surgical hemisphere was increased in the long term follow up. So this is a, uh, we also use uh, TCCD to uh, analyze uh, uh, hemodynamic changes of uh, STA and the uh, different branch of uh, ECA. So this is the velocity of the blood flow and the resistant index change. We can see the pattern uh, changed. And this is uh, uh, compare the two weeks and the three months, we can see the PS, uh, PSB of the uh, bypass decreased. So uh, after two weeks, the PSB and the EDV of the STA, uh, ECA, CCA, and the M M uh, maxillary artery in the operating side, PSV of ICA was significantly higher than pre-operative. The resistance of uh, index of STA 
uh, maxillary artery and the ECA sig significantly decreased. This is a uh, resistance of the uh, vertebral artery, basilar artery significantly increased. PSV, EDV of STA and the EDV of the uh, maxillary artery uh, in the opposite uh, side was significantly higher than preoperative because uh, after the we use one branch of the uh, STA, actually the contralateral side, the STA uh, should take care of the more, uh, more wide of the scalp. So this is uh, uh, three months after uh, surgery. This is uh, the changes of the uh, velocity and the in, uh, resistance index. So this is a long-term follow-up. Symptoms reduced or totally risk of TIA was uh, uh, um, uh, 98%. NIHS uh, score decreased three to eight. Rehemorrhage rate uh, until uh, uh, till now is 1.5% uh, per year comparing to the uh, around 7.9% per year in natural history. Angiogram, STA MSCA bypass patency rate in one week up follow up uh, is 100 uh, percent, but in uh, six months, uh, because there's some competition between the uh, different branches of uh, ECA, so uh, also there's some competition between STA with, uh, under the deep temporal artery or middle range artery. So after the uh, uh, spontaneous collateral uh, flow comes from deep temporal and the middle range artery, actually the blood flow in STA was decreased even occluded. So this in CTP uh, spec and the PET was all improved. This is a CT perfusion change after surgery. So this is a, a, a ratio of the CBV, CBV and the uh, CBF, CBV and the uh, time to peak. This is a, a all, all improved. The hemodynamic changes in STA uh, after the direct bypass, the main blood flow comes uh, ECA to ICA, keep increasing in one or two weeks. After the indirect uh, spontaneous stoma formed uh, from D DTA or MMA, the blood flow in STA could be decreased. And the blood flow in collateral, uh, in contralateral STA increased because of the supplying more scalp. And the DTA and the uh, MMA, the blood flow keep increasing after surgery until achieving dynamic balance with ICA and the STA uh, blood flow. Normally, it uh, could, uh, could take uh, six months or even longer. Uh, ECA blood flow increased, ICA blood flow uh, decreased, and the uh, BA uh, basilar artery blood flow was also decreased. So this is uh, uh, the blood flow change in the ICA, uh, basilar uh, artery was decreased, but the ECA branch all increased. So this is a TAS cell. We can see the ICA, uh, ECA, and the vertebral artery territory, like three kingdoms. So this is a long-term uh, follow-up DSA. We can see the direct and the spontaneous stoma from STA middle meninge artery, deep temporal art, art, artery, and the, even the occipital artery. So this is a, a STA, um, middle meninge artery, deep temporal artery, and the occipital artery. This is a contralateral side frontal lobe. So this is a, all the similar uh, follow-up case. We can see this is a triple bypass, uh, one, two, three, all patent. And this is a, a middle meninge artery, deep temporal artery. So this is a, a occipital artery, parietal branch of STA. So this is a, a diameter change of the STA, ETA, and the MMA we can see the ratio of the diameter change in STA, deep temporal artery, and the middle meninge artery. This, is a, this patient is a, after seven years later, we can see the 
SGA feeding the whole hemisphere and even the contralateral frontal lobe. So this patient, uh, we do the bilateral surgery for him. This is a follow-up and we can see all the brain was feeding by uh, bilateral ECA. The ICA was totally occluded. So this is a spec. We can see the uh, improvement of the blood flow, uh, blood perfusion of the uh, blue cuss area and uh, even the uh, thermos and the basal ganglion. And we also measure the uh, perfusion changes in different cortex ter ter territory. This is the frontal lobe, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, and the temporal lobe, all increased. And this is uh, uh, the interesting thing is uh, in the uh, inner structures like the uh, thermos and the uh, putamen and the uh, uh, caudate, we can see the uh, ischemic condition is even severe in hemological myeloma uh, disease comparing to the ischemic myeloma disease. So this is my personal experience in bypass. Uh, <laughs> the crazy days, uh, 11 cases, 32 cases, bypass cases in one week. And the last year I have 942 cases. Total is now uh, 5,677 bypass in 105 hospitals in seven, uh, 27 provinces by last year. So this is our publications of uh, Moya Moya disease. So uh, we got the highest uh, price of the uh, national price. So easy job is uh, boring. Bruce Lee said, don't pray for any easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Surgery is just about cutting and suturing. So uh, my uh, personal experience more, has no more than six, uh, 65,000 stitches under microscope. Time is brain. Bruce Lee said, absorb what is useful, discard what is not, and add what is unique, your own. This is after 10 cases in one day, we are all happy. <laughs> we are celebrate. But I don't have the 11 ones. <laughs> right. So this is in midnight. After I come to Guangzhou, I uh, did the uh, surgery in night. And uh, this is a Chinese typical Small lobster, it's very tasty. <laughs> and this is uh, Professor McLaughlin, uh, Yuha Honesnami, and uh, Fadi Shaber, Amin Hajani. They all visited my uh, operating room. And this is uh, Luca Wrigley, Peter uh, Leclena, and the uh, trainees from India. Uh, Italy and the Switzerland. This is Luca. Uh, we are doing the uh, distal occlusion of the uh, lung segment, uh, giant MCA aneurysm, and uh, combined with the distal bypass, double bypass. We are discussing about the uh, hemodynamic change. Luca visited uh, me twice, and this is a live case in India. Uh, this is Professor Kato, he is the president of ACNS. And uh, this is, uh, we are, have some teaching course in European, in Japan, in, uh, this is Morocco, uh, Malaysia, and uh, Nigeria, uh, it Italy, Malaysia. Uh, this is uh, Professor uh, Franco Sabade, now he is the uh, president of WFNS. Uh, this is, uh, 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 a female young neurosurgeon from uh, Milano. His, uh, her name is Alessia, and this is uh, his chief, uh, Senzato. Professor Senzato is now the president of uh, Italian uh, Neurosurgical Association. Uh, 
So he visited, uh, she visited me for uh, two months. Uh, after two months, he came back to Italy and uh, uh, he applied to do the uh, bypass surgery and uh, it's uh, approved by um, uh, Franco Sabadell. And then uh, this is the second uh, case. You can see he did a great job. So bypass is not a very, uh, for me, it's uh, very easy. So actually what I, what I done and what I demonstrate here, I think, I believe everybody can do it. Uh, the funny thing is uh, this is Jay uh, who picked me up from airport to here. And the Jay is a Kekwondo trainer in Jacksonville. And uh, you can see he, he followed uh, uh, Bruce Lee when he was 19 years old. Now he, uh, he, he keeps very healthy, yeah. He said the Kekwondo is a lifestyle. And, and the now MMA is an, as, although in MMA is uh, very popular, but it's in a wrong way. <laughs> Thank you. So next year we will host the International Conference of Moya Moya in our department. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shubin. Any questions? Uh... I knew you would. So I th thank you very much. I think it's very interesting. I think there are very important points. One is that Moya Moya disease, is a disease that has a natural aggressive curse. And as you mentioned in your uh, extensive experience, everybody ends up needing surgery. And I think that is a good approach uh, because uh, medically treated Moya Moya disease usually don't do well. Uh, just to contrast, atherosclerosis is different. Uh, these species require medical management before. I also think that is very interesting what you mentioned about the ex exquisite hemostasis, which is very important. These patients need to be have very careful hemostasis because they are very susceptible to have hemodynamic changes. And I, I agree that that is very, very interesting. The final thing that I found also interesting that is different between atherosclerosis and uh, Moya Moya is that in Moya Moya, you need to customize the revascularization because everybody is different depending on which vascular territories they are uh, at risk. And what you show, I think shows very well how different vascular territories can be accessed, which is very interesting. In fact, many people just do boreholes and uh, Moya Moya is very angiogenic. So they grow vessels in a very easy way. Uh, I have a, just a question, the others were comments. The, the question that I have is, do you maintain your patients in antiplatelets or do you stop the aspirin for the surgery? Can, can you talk do you, about that lamp? And, uh, I've been do you maintain the huh? patients on aspirin or do you stop aspirin for the surgery? Oh, uh, it's uh, in some selective cases. Because uh, Moya Moya have two types. One is a uh, ischemic type and uh, another one is a uh, hemorrhagic type. So I, uh, in hemorrhagical ones, I never use aspirin. But in uh, ischemic ones, I, uh, sometimes I use aspirin. No, 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 after surgery. Uh, only one month, yeah. Any more questions? Uh, professor, uh, I saw you mentioned and beautiful, uh, I think for those of us that train in a different country to see the resourceful use of the needle that you can load the silk and put there. So here in the US is a pop-up, one stitch, uh, the whole string is gone. Uh, but I saw you close in the, the temporal fascia. Uh, wound complications, because your approach is very extensive, opening, targeted the area of revascularization. Um, what we learn and what we do is very, Actually, very Actually, it also depends, you know, in some, uh, in some cases, if the recipient, uh, I mentioned the MCA network, if the MCA network is very uh, healthy, very uh, integrated, so, this kind of patient, I only do the double bypass and the small craniotomy. Gotcha. Yeah, and no, no wound problems. Uh huh. Wound, wound complications. Healing? After this treatment, no. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you. And sometimes, uh, if the if you have it the STA, it's quite a, a big uh, uh, suck, uh, suckers. You can use uh, uh, dural to fix it. 
no problem. Yeah. No, no one complication about the 25% hyperemia, and that, that's important. I, I, the final thing is, I, I think for the cell, we gave them a Colombian cheese strings and Chinese spring rolls. That was very good. <laughs> Thank you.